Hey there, it's Eric O'Sullivan, Reverend Sully, the irreverent reverend of all things geeky, the anti-pope and guru of Xanadum ordained on the internet. And it is time for the Sunday Sermon. Um, Sunday Sermon is a series I do, and um, I'm a spiritual guy. I'm an ordained minister of, of, of international faith, of all faiths, I guess, or no faiths. I'm just a, I'm a spiritual maverick. Um, are you like that too? Do you feel like a misfit and you just don't fit in a pew or a temple or, a, a, you know, just you're spiritually independent? I am. And, uh, and I've got my own way. And I'm going to share this with you. Uh, this is a series I'm doing called The Old Notebook. This is a note, These are passages I wrote literally over a decade ago. I was in a pretty you know, kind of a rough spot in my life. Um, and I was introduced to the wisdom of the Bhagavad Gita um, directly from uh, from Deepak Chopra and his audiobook, um, Sacred Verses, Healing Sounds, which offer a few of the chapters, the most important chapters, in his opinion. But it was a primer on the Gita. He would give us uh, some verses and some elaboration and some history, etymology of words, beautiful stuff. I just, the kind of thing I love. Mmm, such as this good cup of coffee. So pull up a cup of coffee and um, let's have the Sunday sermon. And um, so yes, this is, the, this is the old notebook. I call this season two, and this is part two. My nose is itchy and I'm not going to uh, scratch my nose either. Yes, I swear. So, um, this was written, as I said, about a, over a decade ago. I would write this, I would read the Gita on the bus. And this is the Gita according to Gandhi. Um, I would read a passage or two, and I would write down the, uh, the chapter verse, the date, and my elaboration. So, I want to see how far I've come in a decade uh, to these ideals that, I was, that I've been introduced to. And i got to say... It's this sense of spirituality has improved my life. So let's get to it. Um, we're going to start off with a passage I wrote in June 16th of 2011. And uh, this is chapter 16, verse 24. And how are you doing today? Good to see you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you. I am blessed and I am grateful that you're tuned in right now, having some spiritual moments with me. I mean, I suffer from the chronic lonelies, the chronic mopies, and the chronic angries. I have all my life, and I have found a solution to that. You know, therapy only went so far. Medication only went so far. What I needed were guiding principles, and that helped me develop purpose. Now, therapy has its place. Psychopharmacology definitely has its place. Yet, what I needed was a rudder for my ship so I could help direct the vessel of my life. And I'm here to share that with you. So let's get to it. Yes, it's chapter 16, verse 24. It's the last verse of chapter 16. So let's get to it. Uh, and this is, uh, this is Sri Krishna talking to Arjuna, the hero who has had a panic attack on the battlefield right before the, the, um, the Great War started. And also just know always that Sanjaya has been given cosmic vision to hear and see everything that's going on between Arjuna and Krishna. And Sanjaya is describing this to the blind regent Didhisratra. And so there are four major characters in the, uh, the Gita, which is a small sliver of, an, uh, of a Hindu war epic called the Mahabharata. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. If you like epic um, poetry such as the Iliad or the Odyssey, this would be for you. All right, so, Shri Bhagavad Therefore, let Shastra be thy authority for determining what ought to be done and what ought not to be done. Assern, no, ascertain thou the rule of, Sh of Shastra and do thy task here accordingly. 
What is Shastra? Shastra, and I'll read the, the blurb. And that had an old... <laughs> that had a, a Band-Aid for a, for a bookmark right there. Oh, gee. That's one of these little spot ones. <laughs> Shastra is right conduct. It's capital R, capital C, as in, as in proper conduct. Uh, they believed in a caste system, so your your conduct was dependent on your caste. So it wouldn't be for a Brahman to take up a sword and join the fight. That would be the Shastra of a Kshatriya, the warrior class. So I say here, Shastra is right contact. The Gita is the rudder of my boat. <laughs> Kriya Shakti is the name of the vessel. Choose rightly. All will be well. I wrote this a decade, over a decade ago, and that's true today. Kriya Shakti is a uh, Shakti is the feminine emanation of of Atman, Shiva Shakti, the balance of man and woman, male and female, uh, opposing uh, um, things that are that in opposition that complement each other, that give dynamism and create life, create the cosmos. So Kriya Shakti is a, uh, there are like, I think eight different Shaktis, Ichta Shakti, Yan Shakti, uh, and this one's Kriya Shakti. And that, this was something that I really believed in, and I think that helped me. I used Kriya Shakti as a mantra, and it, as a, as, as it really helped me. Kriya Shakti literally means, may I spontaneously generate the right choice at the right time for any decision. Now, it might not be a choice that benefits yourself personally, yet, but if it benefits Dharma, um, then that is the Kriya Shakti, the right choice for the right moment. And it's an appeal to the divine, to the goddess. May you please direct me. May you please be the source of my choice making because I refuse to be a bundle of preconditioned reflexes. I choose to be an infinite choice maker, not be set by conditionality, by this and that, by the other, by enemy ally. I choose different. I choose God. I choose the God that dwells in within me. I choose the God that dwells and the goddess that dwells within you. That's Kriya Shakti. And that mattered to me. And that helped me along the way. And it got me here to wherever here is. Another place on the road, but I'm still on the road. I haven't fallen prey to, to my shadows. I haven't fallen prey to my moodiness, my angriness, or my loneliness. I've only curated a better sense of this spirituality and curated a better sense of purpose now. And I can share this with you, and hopefully this benefits you. So if you suffer from these things as well, there is a way out. This is the ladder. Come with us. We're going upward. Onward and upward. Next verse is from June the 17th of 2011. It is chapter 17, verse 23. Let's get to it. Chapter 17, verse 23. This is um, this is Sri Krishna speaking to Arjuna, Sri Bhavagadavaja. Om Tat Sat has been declared to be the threefold name of Brahman, and by that name were created of the old Brahmanas, the Vedas, and the sacrifice. And now, um, Gandhi says this is from Desai, page three sixty one. Om Tat Sat is one compo composite formula of dedication to God. Om is an expression of being, capital B, subsisting everywhere at all times. Tat expresses the Supreme, capital S, in its detachment, and Sat expresses truth and goodness and beauty. It's one of these, and there's also Tat Vavam Asi, which means this is that, I am that, you are that, all this is that, that's all there is. Tattvamaasi. These are magic words, like Shazam. Really, if uh, for, for, for a Westerner, these are truly magic words. And they are transformative. So, 
Yeah, this one's really easy. It just says Om Sat Tat or Tat Sat. Yeah, and um, yeah, that's a, a a pretty pretty short one today on that one. So let's skip ahead. We're going to June the twenty eighth, two thousand one. We're going back to chapter two and verse forty one. Chapter two is where uh, my mantra, my daily mantra, resides. And um, oh, I would love to learn the whole thing. So it's just. It's the beginning of the story. We had the inciting incident of Arjuna's panic attack. Now in chapter two, Krishna has slowed down time. They're basically in a bubble. And Krishna now, over the next 17 chapters, is going to reveal the essence of the Gita to Arjuna to help give him purpose. and to Because without Arjuna, Krishna cannot win this war against the forces of ignorance defined and personified in the Kauravas and that all will be lost and that Dharma will fail. So Krishna, as we see further along in the Mahabharata, is is um he's he's got a he's got a vested interest in wanting to win. And so he's and he's literally not above or below a dirty trick to get to victory and that's we'll see that along the way in the Mahabharata but this is about the Gita so we're going to focus on the Gita today so this is verse 41 in chapter 2 Sri Bhavagadavaja the attitude in this manner springing as it does from fixed resolve is but one O hero but for those who have no fixed resolve in the attitudes are many branched and unending and um, I wrote down Ekagrata in Sanskrit and Japanese is Nen, N-E-N. Well, that's a romanization, but it means focus, single-mindedness. Focus determines reality. Did I steal that from Star Wars? Your focus determines your reality. Was that, is that something Qui-Gon said to Obi-Wan or, or, to, or, or in somewhere in episode one? And, um, yeah, your focus definitely determines your reality and your mood and your state of mental health and spiritual health and emotional health. So if you're focusing on the wrong things, what do you think is going to happen? If you're focusing on the right things, qui bono, who benefits? Yeah, I offer no answers. I just, I question and I seek. I have answers, but these answers fit this person. Your answers may differ slightly. And if they do, leave that in the comments. I would like to know. Let's do one more. And uh, this is from page 58. And I'm, it's not a quote. Uh, it's not a verse. It's actually a quote fr from Gandhi, one of his musings about this. In page 58, he says, Gandhi says in the, and it's after, it's in ch chapter 4, verse 11, which is, I'll read it real quick. In whatever way men or people resort to me, or this is Sri Krishna talking, capital M, in whatever way humans resort to me, even so do I render to them in every way, O Partha, the path people follow is mine and so Gandhi says one cannot do evil to others and expect good for oneself and regarding his interpretation of 411 and how it applies to daily life so yes if you are evil-minded if you are judgmental if you if you suffer from scorn and 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 give things objects people situations your outrage and your scorn well guess what you become that outrage and scorn and that's your that that's who you will become and who you are in modern society now we choose lots of people choose to see racism everywhere well guess what you're gonna see racism anywhere you look then those are just that's just the lens you have you want to see patriarchy everywhere you're going to you want to see unfairness everywhere you're going to you want to see oppressors and oppressed everywhere? Guess what? You're going to. If you want to see people everywhere, 
you're going to. If you want to see God and goddess in every living being, every inanimate object, you are going to. If you want to see grace, love, harmony, and purpose in yourself, you might start to see it in others, regardless of how cranky they are, if they're your enemy of your or your ally. And um, yeah, I mean, so I don't buy the modern, the modernity. I fall back on classical values. There's a place for modern modernity, and uh, there needs to be. I think that it needs to be a synthesis between the classic and the modern. I mean, there's a reason why new buildings fall down, but classic old ancient buildings are still up. You know, there was just, yeah, there's something to it. It's more than a metaphor, you know, and that's all I got for to say for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am uh, very blessed to have you here with me. This has been part two of season two of The Old Notebook. Um, a spiritual guy, please like and subscribe. We make spiritual content here. On, on work days, I like to do a gratitude list in the morning and share that with you. This gratitude list has the power to help me personally, and hopefully it'll, it can help you. Because my day, I get ganged up on by the mopes, the angries, and the lonelies. I really do. And my gratitude list reminds me later on in the day to count my blessings and it gives me purpose through my gratitude. This is a gift I received from from other people and hopefully I can pay it forward by giving it to you. The transformative power of gratitude. You know, don't doubt it. Try it for a while. You can make a, a list a week. I go for every day because that's just who I am and that's the structure I think I deserve. And and I think it makes good YouTube content also because it's about sharing hope. It's about sharing purpose. And you can do that by starting to express your gratitude. Um, I make daily content when it comes to comic books. I have a series called The 365 Days of the Golden Age of DC Comics. 3 p.m. U.S. Eastern. Tune in. I'm a professional chef. I make cooking videos. I have a playlist called What's Cooking. Tune in. I hear that by soup videos are very 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 popular with people most people i guess love soup i make a, a, a heck of a, a heck of a bowl of soup so uh tune in and i i'm also I, I take the videos of bunnies in the morning i wake up before the sun and uh, the bunnies are having their breakfast and i take cute little videos of them i listen to bird song if the skies are clear i share whatever planets are in the sky i call it hashtag naked eye sky and in this experience here being spiritual i call this hashtag lighten up it's about enlightenment and it's about how spirituality can help improve your life on a daily meaningful basis seriously i mean, I, I i can't i have nothing to sell i have nothing i have no agenda i've, I've got I, i've got all i have is sharing this direct experience with you and how transformative it has been it's helped with my anger. It's helped with my loneliness. And it's helped with my moodiness. They still all exist. And they still gang up on me. But you know what? With God's help, or the goddess's help, and with my own help, I am helping myself. And I'm so glad I'm still here on planet Earth and sharing experiences with new friends, old friends, family, and yourself too. So please, leave a comment, like and subscribe, and God bless, namaste, good luck. Cheers.